Student Showcase, Part 3. Hi everyone, my name is Saurabh and I am a third year student at Delhi Technological University. I will be presenting my GSA project today which was to implement a storyboard doctor in Krita. For those of you who are unfamiliar with storyboarding, it is a graphical representation of a story. So it is meant to convey the idea of a story using pictures. Most storyboards consist of small thumbnails that describe the content of the scene. They may also have some other information like the dialogue or action or the camera movements and positions. Like in this one, they have a thumbnail and some deep description of what is happening in the thumbnail. Storyboarding happens before the actual animation. It is sort of a planning for the animation and makes sure that everyone is on the same page. Also, animating things is time taking and you don't want to spend time on animating something only to be told that this was not what the director wanted. So, a storyboard facilitates better discussion about the animation and characters. It also allows you to showcase your idea to potential employers. Alright, moving on to how the docker is implemented. This docker is part of Krita's plugin system. Qt's MVC framework is used. So there are two models which interact with each other and there are view and delegate classes for each of the models. Also Krita's animation interface is used for interaction with the timeline docker in Krita. It takes a list of keyframes that exist in the timeline docker and provides an interface to add some extra data for those frames. Also, thumbnail for all the frames in storyboard docker are visible at the same time. Alright, so now let's take a look at the storyboard docker in Krita. First of all, to open it, go to settings, dockers, and in the Storyboard. Okay. So now we have the storyboard docker selected here. We have a list of panels in the storyboard docker. Each panel consists of a thumbnail, the panel's name, its duration, and some comment fields associated with it. The comment field can be changed from the comment submenu, where we can change the visibility of uh, each of the comment fields on a folder comment basis and rearrange them and add new comments and delete them and other things and to edit a comment just double click and uh, type anything now let's take a look at the interaction between the storyboard docker and timeline docker every panel in the storyboard docker responds to a frame in timeline docker in the top left corner, there is a frame number for each of the panels. Duration field in the top right corner corresponds to the number of frames to get to the next keyframe. You can see in the timeline docker at the bottom, to change the duration for a panel in the storyboard docker, all keyframes after the frame for that panel move to the right. Similarly, if we decrease the durations, they move to the left. Also, when frames are inserted in the timeline docker. Storyboard panel is inserted in storyboard docker. So you can see I inserted a keyframe in timeline docker and the corresponding panel was inserted in storyboard docker. Similarly if we remove a keyframe the panel is removed. If we move the keyframe its frame number changes. Let's take a look at the buttons at the top of the docker. In the top right corner, we have the arrange button, which is used to manage how the panels are arranged in the docker. So we can choose the views and modes. Views decide what part of the panel is visible in the docker. We can choose to see only the thumbnail or only the comments or both. The modes options decide how the panel is arranged. So you can choose to arrange them in row wise fashion or column wise fashion or in a grid. In the top left corner, we have the export button, which can be used to export the storyboard to either a PDF or a SVG document. The export dialog has options to manage the layout of the exported document. So you can choose the range of the panels to be exported, 
rows and columns of panels per page, font size, page size, and orientation. There is also an option to choose layout from an SVG file. Let's export this storyboard and see the results. So it works nicely. Thank you very much for watching the presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Leonardo Segovia. I'm from Bahia Blanca in Argentina, and my project is entitled Dynamic Feed Layers in Krita using CRTO. This project was implemented in the Kita Painting Suite and was mentored by Booty Witch and Ramp, Dimitri Keseiko, and Ivan Chossi. Let's begin with some context. Layers are one of the core concepts of digital painting. They let artists manage certain components independently of the rest of the artwork, for instance, backgrounds, lighting, line art, and so on. Patterns and textures are also essential components. They are used to simulate the appearance of physical materials and phenomena. Usually, they are saved as raster images. This means they are limited at creation time, material size, and resolution. As of the latest stable version of Krita 4.3, it supports using patterns and textures to two types of layers. The first is called a file layer, and it lets you embed stock textures on your canvas. And the second is called a fill layer, and it can be used for flat fills, tidal raster patterns, and random noise. As you can see, neither of them lets users create dynamically generated content in an artistically free way. From an implementation point of view, ending a fill layer type requires many moving parts. The first minimum is the following two. First, you must implement a general editor which finds the layer contents. Generators are a subclass of Krita's this generator. Next, you need to subclass this config widget to expose a configuration widget. You may also need to implement a new type of resource. This is done in four steps. First, you propose a new resource as a subclass of core resource. Then, Krita must be made aware of it through a suitable extension of its resource server. Next, to make it selectable, we need a selection widget. Krita provides a widget for this purpose, for resource item chooser, that can be instantiated with its resource type. Obviously, we will still have to write the same widget and instruction. Parts is fairly designable, as long as it integrates with the resource server. So, my project adds a new type of field layer that implements a scriptable dynamic content. This is powered by an expression language library created by Disney Animation called CXP. This library enables flexible artistic control and customization of the end result. It not only allows users to write their own script, but also to adjust individual variables using QT widget. Since CXP textures are procedurally generated, most applications like Krita are able to render them at any resolution desired, preserving their quality. Furthermore, CX4 scripts are just like any other resource in Krita. This means it can be created, edited, bundled, and shared across the internet. My project touches many parts in Krita. To begin with, this work involves setting CX4 up as a, as a third party dependency and creating the new generator and resource management. As described earlier, I also added extensive documentation to Krita's user manual, a language reference which was ported straight from this documentation, an introductory tutorial, a resource management entry, and a full layer entry explaining how it all works. This project also includes an extensive preset bundle, courtesy of Walter Van Hover and David Revolt. For the CX for site, changes were much more extensive. I cleaned up and refactored a great chunk of the code base, I fixed many bugs and implemented improvements suggested by the community. Its UI toolkit was also updated and refactored. I added support from ARM devices and enabled localization throughout the language parser and the provided QT widget. This part of the work is described in more detail in a talk at this year's academy. 
integrating Hollywood open source with KDE applications. But that is not all. I had time to take on three stretch points. First, I added multiple rendering on both film layers in the existing stroke system. Up to now, three layers were rendered with a single background thread. This made CX for layers unsuitable for use with big canvases. So I refactored the rendering process into small tiles, and each tile is rendered in a separate shop. It must be known that this works with supported generators only. Secondly, I enable thin layers to be previewed before addition. My project refactored the rendering process to make it soft and checkable in the layer addition stroke. Finally, I cleaned up the real casting lines of developer documentation in the GRIDA repository, moving it to the user manual. The drawing you see right now shows what you can do with CXCode. It was made by David Revoy for the episode 33 of his web comic Pepper and Carrot, the founder like four films of Andy the Witch was created using this work. The export is available now in ITV of Krita at Krita.org. Thank you all for watching this. Hello everyone, my name is Gita Kim. In this summer, I participated in Google's own mode code with KD, and I worked to improve MemLink protocol integration of Kirogi. Kirogi is a young open source ground control station, which is a software to control drones. It is started and being developed by KD community. Mavlink is a messaging protocol between drones and ground control station. Famous flight control units for drones like Ardu Pilot and Pink Spot use this protocol. As the name suggests, my project is about improving Mavlink protocol integration of Kirogi. For that, I added three major features such as TCP and serial connection support, multiple vehicle management, multiple connection management. TCP connection support allows users to control drones through TCP. Serial connection support is the basis of formal update feature through serial connection. Plus, now Kirogi can manage up to 255 drones at the same time. This feature will be very useful after implementing mission planner. In addition to that, now Kirogi can manage different connections with different properties, like multiple serial connections with different port and board rate. The most challenging thing for me was thinking about overall architecture. Kirogi has plugins to support various models of drones. It supports drones like Rice Tello and Perobiba and the way how Mavlink works is quite different from others. As all plugins use same GUI rather than using GUI for each plugin, I had to think about architecture of GUI and libraries that are shared among plugins. During this project, I learned much about how to design a software. In addition to that, I learned about Qt, QML, KDE framework, drones, embedded development, and most importantly, how to contribute to KDE projects. Thank you for watching my presentation. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Hello everyone, my name is Ashwin, and uh, I'm a GSOC student for Krita, and my project is integrating the MyPaint brush engine in Krita. My mentors are Bao, Dimitri, and Waltara. Okay, so what are brush engines? A uh, brush engine is just a code piece or a component which uh, governs the mannerism in which uh, colors have been painted over the canvas. So they are responsible for look and feel of the brush. So brush engines just take uh, some user input like uh, some 
tail tangle from from stylus say pressure from from stylus or the velocity at which the stroke is happening so they just take these inputs this dynamic dynamic inputs and uh, on the basis of that they generate a stroke so for instance here i have just compared to two brush engines of prita to the left we have a grid brush engine and uh, it simply looks like uh, a grid of pixels here while to the right it looks like some pixels have been have been sprayed over the canvas so that is just uh, because we are using different brush engines so we are getting different effects so that is just an illustration that uh, brush engine can give us different effects mm, so uh, my paint is a software which is similar to krita and uh, is used for painting and uh, artists do love my paint brushes a lot so because of this popularity the my paint developers have uh, separated out their brush engine in the form of a library namely lib my paint uh, so till date other than the my paint itself jimp open tunes and uh, envy have uh, done this integration so coming to the implementation to use lib my paint to render some stroke over of over our canvas all we have to do is uh, implement this draw tab and get our methods we just need to override this and uh, write the code concerning our own canvas object classes so draw tab is responsible for rendering the tabs over the canvas whereas get color is used by lim my paint to see the color that is currently present over the canvas so that is used by my paint to render some color smudge effects this is just a schematic representation of the functioning of brush lab so this is just uh, my paint library and uh, this is surface in our case it's a kispain device and this is the stroke to method which is called for generating strokes it uh, accepts a uh, my paint brush object along with some dynamic inputs say x and y tilt of uh, stylus pressure uh, d time values which is the time elapsed between current and the previous stroke and at the back end it calls our method on draw tab and get your method over our surface to generate taps so for the project i had two milestones the first one was to integrate the lim map paint in the form of a br brush engine in krita and the other one was to expose the my paint settings in the krita's preset editor so as to facilitate creation of new mapping brushes so this is the krita interface and uh, this is preset chooser of krita so let us just filter on my paint and this is the my paint presets which have been loaded we can just pick say acrylic and this is the acrylic stroke we can pick something like calligraphy so this is a calligraphy stroke we can choose something like modeling and this is the modeling brush we can pick airbrush and that is an airbrush stroke so from here we can trigger con convert into it into a eraser and uh, it will start working like an eraser and we can just switch back to our airbrush this is the presets preset editor where we can just toggle off the settings say we can change the red dye to something smaller and we can just increase it And here we have all of the other settings which my paint gives us. Okay, so that's my project. Uh, 
and thank you for giving me this opportunity thank you